on uh, kind of monitoring that, and I know you give him some Wednesdays off uh, practice, but uh, do you kind of get concerned about that number when it gets real high? Again, you try to take care of them. You try to do what you need to do to win each and every football game. Um, you try to take care of them throughout the week. Um, I think that, you know, the two games, not uh, obviously not last game, but the, the game before that and the game before that, we were able to get him out in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, so um, you, you try to monitor as much as you possibly can, and, and, and that's really our jobs Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, and being aware of it, you know, um, uh, on Sunday, but um, yeah, always considered that, considering that with each and every one of our players that we feel with with load management, um, and I think our strength and conditioning staff and our trainers and our doctors give me really good insight to to how to do that and give our staff really good insight on how to do that. So um, yeah, always on our mind, uh, uh, you know, w with with how many touches he has. Well, on the same note, like the edge rushers actually are their snap counts are. Actually, wait, all the staffs are way lower. I think Josh has the highest snap count for any one game, like 42 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Has that been – last year they played a ton of snaps. Especially. Sure. It, you know, and that's the flow of the game. Like last game was 53 snaps. Um, I think last year we had a game with like 90-something oh, against okay. Buffalo. All right, so that, that plays into it. So, yeah, I mean, that's you're, – you're trying obviously to – Think you're thinking about that with everybody, and and that, but not every position has rotations, right? Offensive line don't rotate, defensive line does, uh, running backs do, um, but the flows of the game, the way the game's being played, right, that can di dictate a lot of different things. So it's every season's not apples to apples. I know it's the same amount of games, but every game's a little bit different and how the games are kind of playing out. So we we also are aware of that, and I think that's good for our guys, and I think that's good that our depth has that, that we're able to do those things at defensive end. Why did you guys ultimately not make a trade before the deadline? Um, you know, I think that would be a good question for Howie. I know you don't get him until <laughs> until the end of the year, but I, I really, as speaking on my end of it, but is I really I really feel really strongly about our team and where we are, um, you know, when, when talking through all those different things. Um, I, you know, just feel so strongly about our team and Howie's done a great job of building it. Um, to date that, you know, didn't feel like uh, at that time we that there was anything to do. So, um, yeah, I feel really good about the people that we have here, the guys that we have here, feel strong about um, the depth that our, you know, the starters at the position and the depth at that position. So that speaks for the work that, that Howie and his staff have done, you know, from the draft till now, um, really at the end of the day. Nick, this franchise, this franchise, what's Bryce Huff's role going forward? Yeah, still be you know still being in the in the mix and in, in the rotation of the rushers. You know, again, um, I think we I think the ability to you know, with Jimmy's question of you know less rush reps for some of those guys. Yeah, it's a one one part of it is that they they we played a little bit less uh, less um, plays, but also that we feel good about the rotation. I think all four of those guys have have done a nice job. <clears throat> and then we'll see if Jay looks getting into the mix as well. Um, yeah. that I think that because I think he's been doing a good job at practice to be able to, to go that. So we feel like we have you know five guys in that rotation um, that can get after the passer, that can stop the crush the edge on the run. Um, and, and so yeah, we got I got a ton of faith in him. Like I said, you know, you guys know that he went he had something going on. Uh, you know after. After uh, warmups last week, and uh, but that that that's just the way that game went and how he was feeling, and um, yeah, I got a ton of confidence in him and um, and the things that he can do. This franchise has um, lost six in a row in Dallas. You've been here for three of them. Every year is a new team, but what do you, what do you make of this team's this franchise's struggles down there recently, and how eager are you to? Snap that. Yeah, you're always eager to to get out there and win uh, the next football game. I think the way I feel about the team, you know, obviously uh, we haven't won there since I've been here. But like, I kind of look at this the same way as like New Orleans. When we same question was was provided for us in in New Orleans. Like, hey, yeah, you guys haven't won there since whenever. Um, Merrill uh, made it very clear that we hadn't won in Cincinnati ever with the with the awesome voice that he has. Um, and that doesn't mean any. That doesn't mean anything to us. Like if you're if you're worried about like unless it was something like the weather or the the dome or what that was like you felt like it, we just got to go out there and play a good game against a good football team. Um, and and 
and, and handle their their crowd and their noise and you know things that we do for for any football game but you know we're treating this week uh like every other week we're looking to get we're looking to get better this week to give ourselves the best chance to win um and um against a really good opponent are, are you, you expecting the defense has been really good since the bye week is there one thing you would attribute that to like it clicking coming together what do you think that um, yeah, I think just everybody continuing to be on the same page. A defensive football <clears throat> at the end of the day, for, and I think Vic calls a really good game um, week in and week out. He's one of, that's why he's one of the better defensive coordinators in the, in the NFL. Um, but defensive football is always going to be about tackling. It's always going to be about <clears throat> excuse me physicality. Um, it's always going to be about being on the same page, and it's always going to be about relentless effort getting to the football and playing team defense. And we're just getting better at that. I think that's – I think that we're getting better as a football team um, because of the way that the that that we're practicing, um, and just the way we're meeting, the way we're walking through. You can see signs of us just getting better with our tackling, getting better with our ball security, getting better with the way we, you know, we're on the same page. It's like just these, like it's like. There's no secret to success. Like the secret to success is work your butt off, have good people in place, work your butt off, and try to get better each week and control the things you can control. And so, um, just I, I got a ton of confidence in uh, in the defensive staff um, of how they've been getting these guys better. Bobby King is a is a, like you want to talk about somebody that's so focused in on the fundamentals, like. Uh, you know, all he cares about is getting these guys better at tackling. All he cares about is getting these guys better at block destruction. All he cares about is getting these guys know, on the same page. All he cares about is 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 how he how the guys come out there and and try to take the football away. And so I think that's a buy-in from the from everybody because um, we know fundamentals is how we r reach another level. And it's again, it's just not how you do team periods. It's how you drill. It's all those things. And I think that's. You know there is there's a price to pay for success, and it's it's working hard. Are you are you expecting to get uh, Dallas or Slay back, and, and do you have an update on AJ? Yeah, we'll see on all that. You guys will get an injury report on that uh, uh, later today. We'll see how today goes and, and and where we are. We still got a little bit of time before practice, um, so we'll see where they are. What is what is Bobby King bringing to the to the off ball line? I mean specifically. I mean, yeah, you made a change. You made three changes. At the man. <laughs> One you had to. <laughs> um, I think that um, again. I think this that Bobby is. Have you guys talked to Bobby? Yeah, uh, not in a while. Yeah, I, I was a, I was fortunate enough to work with Bobby in it, with the Chargers, and this guy is a relentless worker. Um, and like I said, like I just f find him somebody that just how he's always thinking about how he gets players better, like. We we missed something in the game, and without getting too much into it, and he's like, "Hey, here's how here's how I got to drill this. Here's what I'm thinking here." And like, I I admire that. Like, I admire like, okay, the the linebacker missed this, and he's thinking what he can do to help them be better at that. That's coaching. That's that's like that's why we as coaches put everything on our plate when something goes wrong on the field because we have the opportunity to provide them uh, the things that we think they need to get better at, and then the opportunity to do so. Um, and so I really admire about that. He is a, like, he puts that, you guys see it, I don't know if you, he puts that uh, uh, vest on and they strike the crap out of him. They put their hands on him. He's jarring his back. Like, he's going to be, like, I'm assuming he's going to, he only got so many more years of letting them hit him in his chest because it's probably been happening for a long time. Um, but he's obsessive about it and he'll, they'll hit the crap out of him. He'll be like, nope, that was too bendy or that was too, you know, strike, you know, whatever it is. And so I admire that he's always trying to get them better fundamentally. As a position coach, you know, the coordinator, it's a group effort when you're coming up with a plan. There, there is no doubt about that. You know, you take inputs from everybody. But as a coordinator, or pardon me, as a position coach, your sole, your biggest job, your most important job is how do you get those players better at their, at their fundamental. And it's, you got all different types of players, you know. And, and it's how do you get those guys better fundamentally? How do you get those guys to understand their job more? And that's where it's – that's where I'm, uh, you know, knew that about Bobby and seeing it, you know, firsthand as he's, you know, continued to grow in his coaching. And, uh, yeah, I can't say uh, enough good things about him. Do you think across the board you're getting a, a higher level of coaching from your position coaches this year? 
I think that I've, I've really been pleased, you know, throughout as far as our position coaches throughout the, the time we've had here. We've had a lot of success, um, and that success, you know, is, is contributed through the entire organization, first and foremost, you know, how are we getting the, the guys in here to, you know, giving us the talent here to help us, uh, you know, do our jobs at a very high level, um, the players making the plays and the position coaches and the coordinators, you know, doing their job to get them better. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not going to compare one to the other. I think that, like I said, we've had a lot of success, won a lot of games, um, and everyone shares in that, um, in that, uh, uh, those, um, those successes. Um, and so, but I, but to, to say, you know, the guys that we have now love, love our coaches that we have. Like I've been with Jason Michael for, you know, this is seven years. Like I got so much confidence that the type of coach he is and, and Aaron Moorhead, right. Going back to when he did an internship with us for Indy. Um, and now, you know, him being the wideout coach and Jamal Singleton didn't know him before we got here, we hired a, we hit a home run with, with, with Jamal and Clint, I love what Clint's bringing to the, you know, to the table as far as, you know, how he's gotten the defensive tackles better. Uh, Wash has been here. Wash is one of the guys that, and Stout, guys that were here and like, I think we got really good position coaches that, a lot of them can be coordinators and and uh, have been coordinators, and they know how to get guys better. And I want to—I mean, I, I could go on. I want to be able to say everybody's name, but I'm really pleased with um, the guys that we have here right now, um, and they're doing a great job. They work their butts off. Um, they have relationships with these players, so the players trust them, and they're getting our players better. Um, and, and that is that is very that is very obvious. Yeah, that, that's that's along, along those lines. Um, is there an example from your career in the NFL where maybe you or another coach really helped change the way a guy who had been in the league for a while was doing something and improving? You know, the idea being that a guy who's been in the league a while is kind of set in his ways, and yet a coach was able to, um, mm -hmm. you know, really help him improve. Yeah, I think that the, what players want from you is, 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 as a position coach, as a coordinator, is – Getting, how do you get them better? And I've never really run into, I think that I've never really run into a guy that's like, nope, this is how I do it, and I'm not doing it any other way. Like, because, and, and why is that? I think it's, I think the, the reason that is, is that, you know, you provide them, you, you show them that you know what you're talking about, and you provide them an opportunity to get better. They get better, and then you, get, then you got them hooked, I guess to say, right? Um, and so I haven't experienced that in, in, and I, and I get that that happens, but like, we feel like, you know, we do some things like, uh, yeah, I, I've not, I have not experienced that. I guess I've been, it's been around really good guys. And again, like I said, what are you doing to get them better? And that's gotta be the first and foremost. And like, if we're not doing anything getting better, then we're just their buddies or their older, their older buddies. I guess now I can say that I'm a little older as a coach now. Um, and so our job is not is yes to have a relationship with the player so we can get them better. But our job first and foremost is to get them better, um, and and work tirelessly um, to to do that through like I said with Bobby Kane getting them better with through drills and thinking of different things to help them and the coaching points. And really, it comes down to as a as a position coach or as a coach of being a bulldog and not like at some point like if I keep telling you that if we keep telling you the same thing like. Some point, you're like this guy's going to be relentless. He, if I keep messing this up, this guy's going to be relentless, and now I'm just going to—I got to fix this because he ain't going to shut up about this. Like, and there is something to that. Like, I, uh, you know, being a bulldog. I, I know Stout's a bulldog. I know we got a lot of bulldogs on this staff. Where it's like, you mess something up, they're going to tell you, and they're—and it's not like they're going to keep telling you over and over and over again. Last Jalen Hurts said coming out of the bye week that it was one of the most uh, per efficient bye weeks he's ever had, and then he comes out. And has played four very good games. What, do you see anything that he's doing differently over this last month that he wasn't doing, perhaps in the first month? Yeah. Again, I, the things that you do in, in the dark eventually show up in, in the light. And it's like he worked his butt off, and he's been working his butt off. Um, but it was a great, it was a great bye week. Just you know, the conversations, the film watching together, the 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 collaboration of things, and. Um, you know he has. He's played. He's played great football the, this past month. He's a great player. So um, I, I, you love when that happens because again, you're constantly trying to. You're constantly promoting. Hey, make no mistake about why we're getting better. We're getting better because of the work. We're getting better because we're capable. Because we have good players and good coaches in this room. But we're getting better because of the work. 
That doesn't matter if it's in practice, walkthrough, um, meetings, bye week. Um, you know, you get better because of the work, and it's such a long season, and uh, and you just want to continue that rise. And that's and that's what you know. Jalen's played uh, played really good this this, this past month, and uh, it's done a great job taking care of the football. Done a great job leading this team. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, pr I'm proud of how he's been going. I, I told John yeah, again. Go ahead, John. With, with Callen, real quick, he's got a long history in that building. It's been a while, but uh, and he knows them. They know him. Uh, complicate things, help things, in your experience? Yeah, it's always you always are looking for any advantage that you can get um, in everything. Um, I'm sure they are, too. So um, we're tur we, we won't turn – we'll turn over every stone we possibly can. I'm sure they will as well. Um, so I, I, sometimes you can get yeah, you can get too much wrapped into that, um, and so it's like, hey, go through the process of what we do when we when we have information there, and you know, use what we can. And it takes discernment, wisdom to know what to use and what not to use, and uh, you do that through the your studies and the tape and everything like that. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.